Welcome to the Living Wholehearted Podcast, where we're helping leaders live with integrity. Whether you're a mom or a CEO, you're a leader, and how you lead matters. Welcome. It's the month of Valentine's, and we're continuing the month of love with one of our favorite couples. That sounds so cheesy. (laughs) Bill and Kathy (laughs) Town. Now, uh, they'll fill us in on who they are, but uh, we want you to know right up front that Bill and Kathy are the real deal. And Bill has uh, been one of my go-to dads when I get stuck raising girls because he's raised three of them on his own. Well, not on his own. Uh, (laughs) To be clear, uh, Kathy has raised three girls. Bill has joined in. Uh, And they love Jesus. They love people. Uh, Pretty good for pastor's kids uh, Mm -hmm. record there. Well, Bill and Kathy, they've been in full-time pastoral ministry for close to 40 years. I think 37 to be exact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. First of all, uh, there, you know, there's very few that have made it that long in ministry. It's really a hard job, to be honest. So if you're in ministry, I think this is for sure for you. But if you're in any sort of leadership, this is going to be a powerful podcast for you as we talk about marriage and leadership and raising children. Kathy was once an interior designer, and she loves to teach God's Word. Mm. But along the way, she also founded Divine Threads, a nonprofit helping disadvantaged women. And Bill is currently the senior pastor of Rolling Hills Community Church, just located outside of Portland, Oregon. They have three daughters, as Jeff said, that are all married, and they all have their babies of their own. So I happen to have been a matchmaker for one of your daughters. Yes. You're welcome. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Your turn. So tell us uh, a little bit more about the stage of life that you two are in now and and what are you doing for fun? Oh, man. Well, we were empty nesters for a week yes. when our kids graduated <laughs> for... from high school, but then we moved my parents in. Ah. And so uh, my dad's health was failing, and so he passed away. Just a couple, you know, a few years later, and uh, so mom, mom still lives with us, but uh, we enjoy our family. Our family's all around here. In fact, they all come to our church, which yes. is crazy, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, and so we enjoy being with them. We enjoy really being with each other and hanging out and laughing a lot. Yeah. And uh, and then I love the outdoors. And Jeff and I have kindred hearts there, yes. uh, hunting and fishing and just anything. Um, being outside. Love it. Yes. And Tara mentioned that I was an interior designer. I retired a couple years ago. I love saying retired. I'm mm-hmm. retired, Bill. You did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did it. Don't forget, mm-hmm. though. He doesn't like it as much as me. But um, I enjoy spending time with my mother-in-law. We do puzzles. And I've also picked up oil painting in the last couple of years, Ooh. which is so much fun. It really just does and something to my it. heart. Thank you, Phil. Who knew you had all that in you? Not me. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a good point to say, like, every season has something different for you, and there's fun surprises if you're open and adventurous and willing to risk. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So fun. Okay, Belle, so start us out with telling us a little bit about how you originally got into ministry. Yeah. Um, Well, it, it probably goes back to, I was a student at Long Beach State, grew up in Long Beach, California, and, uh was really growing in my faith and just decided I need to really listen to the Holy Spirit. And if I feel like I'm being prompted by the Holy Spirit, I should follow Him, because that's the voice of God. And uh, and I'd always talk myself out of things, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing that on campus, which was totally scary to me. And uh, so, you know, in study groups or... Even in class, when you know, I remember, I remember a prof first day geology class, 150, 200 students in this big, you know, lecture hall, saying, "Okay, if you're a Christian out there, this isn't for you. We are going to be into science and facts, not about myth, about a god or a creator." And uh, I just remember thinking, you know, I, sh- I should just say a something to defending we're not a bunch of idiots, you know. And I don't even remember what I said, but it's like, oh, oh no, is that the Holy Spirit? Oh, no, I got to do something. Oh, no. So I raised my hand and said something. It's like, you know, um, actually having, you know, an intelligent being behind this, th- there's a lot of logic to that. Mm-hmm. And so how did it happen? You know, you can debate about it. But um, and all these people came up to me after class going, oh, I'm so glad you said it. I'm so glad you said it. I'm like, well, where were you? You know, um, <laughs> but I didn't uh, hear an amen. <laughs> yeah, but that journey, yeah. I was so afraid to 
follow the Holy Spirit because I just thought I would have no friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody would avoid me. And just the opposite happened. Mm. I was able to engage with so many deeper conversations with people, led a couple of people to the Lord, started discipling people. And it's like, this is the most exciting life you could. This is life on the edge. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I want to do that. Yeah. And so that was kind of my calling. And uh, so it's, Lord, however you ever want to use me. And I didn't know what that would be, what that would look like. I was dating Kathy, and but she was all in for that journey, and uh, that's that's how we got into ministry. Mm -hmm. So, how did you ever imagine yourself being a senior pastor? Someday? No, no, <laughs> kind of. You know, that's the one thing I don't want to do. Uh -huh. um, I feel like my calling was God, use me however you think um, I can be used most impactfully in your kingdom, and uh, and so that's been kind of my journey is. I've been invited into different opportunities. It's been, yeah, I could see how that could have greater influence. And so, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, a step. Yeah. And so lead pastor idea, actually something I never really want, never interested in until they asked me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, God, I need to take this seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it started, what, 37, 37 years ago at Rolling Hills? Yeah. And, and yeah. it started there. Student Ministries. Student Ministries. Yeah, maybe. which I never thought I would, you know, when I was feeling about my call and I was working with college students, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I, students wasn't the deal, but I loved every minute of mm -hmm. that. I mean, I had so much fun. Really and good. yeah. That mm. turned in after X number of years. Ten to, years in student ministries. And then yeah. executive pastor. Executive pastor for 15. Yep. And then uh, asked to be lead pastor. The lead pastor. Yeah. yeah. I love it. What a great example of keeping in step with the Spirit and not maybe uh, planning ahead or having something out there. You just kind of, again, yeah. saying yes to the invitation when yep. he says, okay, now we're turning left. Yep. That's, so, that's it. it's okay, a, here it's we a, go. It's a ride. <laughs> yes, it, it has been. Galatians 5 says, mm. this with the Spirit. Mm. All right, Kathy, Will, what motivated you to start Divine Threads? Well, I, uh, I was raised in a very conservative home. A very uh, traditional sort of legalistic home, I'll say. And so I was raised with the attitude that I really needed to be obedient. And I did everything that a good Christian girl should do. I would go to church. I would read my Bible. Uh, I would pray, all with the goal of learning more about the Bible. But... Uh, having no interest whatsoever in marginalized people or people with different lifestyles, people that made bad choices, and people that didn't have the same belief system that I did. And over the years, God taught me layer by layer and started peeling away the layers of, um, of that sin in my life, that pride, um, that if I would to call myself a follower of Jesus— my life needed to look like his. Mm. And he reached out to marginalized people left and right. All throughout scripture, it was there. And even in the Old Testament, God's heart is for um, marginalized people. So that set me on this trek to figure out how I was going to, um, to make that a part of my life, a big part of my life, that I needed to um, live like Jesus and show love to marginalize. So um, through a long set of circumstances and different um, trainings that I went through, it, God finally laid on my heart that I was to start a nonprofit for uh, marginalized women called Divine Threads, mm -hmm. where we serve women by providing clothing and makeovers and career counseling and mending the soul groups for women who have suffered abuse. And it's been such a privilege mm. to be a part of that. Mm. We've served over 350 women wow. mm -hmm. and uh, are excited. We're remodeling a new space that's going to be a lot larger so we can serve even more women. Mm. That's wonderful. And can I just say with that, too, with just that journey was not an intellectual journey in the sense of, oh, I need to, I need to be better at this now. I need to you know, do something that's that proves I'm loving. Right. But actually you were, you know, God ruined you. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He in did. fact, we had conversations about, you know, her just reading things and her heart breaking for oh. people and saying, Bill, I don't think I've been a Christian yeah. until now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and so convicting. It was, it was, it was a yeah. heart. Very much. Yeah. It went from just the head to the heart, yeah. to the mm -hmm. gut. You mm -hmm. felt it at that, 
that deep soul level. Yes. And it moved you to action. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which we know that about you, Kathy. <laughs> I say that sometimes like God, he just loves us too much. To, I mean, for me, I, oh. I would say about my, my own story, he loves me too much to let me get away with some of the things that uh, I isn't, couldn't that's see, so true. I was ignorant to, mm-hmm. or that I, in terms of my own gap, you yeah. know, the integrity gap. And, uh, and, and, you know, he just, he loves us. He pursues mm-hmm. us. And mm-hmm. I mean, even when you're fighting to not even believe that he's around or that he cares or yeah. that uh, he just, he comes mm-hmm. for you and because yeah. he loves you so much. And yes. that's, that's what I was picking up from right. what you shared. And I think about all the things that I would have missed out on had he not convicted me mm-hmm. or I hadn't been sensitive. And that's all the spirit of God. I'm, yeah, and I think what's so powerful, Kathy, what, what you're sharing is so many might take that as a shame message that God's saying, I'm bad because I'm judgmental versus just saying, oh, honey, mm-hmm. okay, this is just something that right. we're going to keep oh. growing here. And it's 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 a with love, not absolutely. with a wagging finger at you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have dug a hole and stepped in it and never come out. <laughs> yeah. But God's not like that. He's mm-hmm. so gracious and loving and patient. So good. Well, you guys have seen a unique lens of being leaders in ministry. And leadership is difficult on marriages. It's mm-hmm. difficult on the family and particularly ministry, of, ironically, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And I think the church in general, or people don't understand that. So what do you think are the unique challenges that leaders and particularly pastors and ministry families have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I uh, I actually was talking to one guy one um Time he he directed me to this article that said pastors are one of three. Or I think it might have been lead pastors are one of three professions in the United States where when you retire, you think worse about yourself than when you started. Wow. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, I I get that. I, I think in ministry. Like a lot of jobs, but it's just never over because you're dealing with people and, and people are always in crisis. And um, and so you can justify never stopping mm-hmm. or never putting boundaries yeah. up because these are God's beloved children mm-hmm. and he's put you in their life to help them. Yeah. And so if they have a need, how can you not step into that? And so... Um, I think one of the biggest problems is having boundaries in your life mm-hmm. to where, because it's, it's, you can very easily feel guilty for putting any boundary in your life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so you just, and so, I mean, we'll probably talk about it more, but I think self reliance, self importance, all those things can get, just get instantly out of, um, out of whack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then lead you into really some unhealthy patterns. That you can't share because you're the pastor who's supposed to mm-hmm. um, have it together, mm-hmm. and so you're you're dying inside, telling other people what to do while not allowing yourself to live in a healthy way because of expectations that really a lot of times if if other people don't put them on you, you're just putting them on yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Really I good. I would say for me as a pastor's wife, um, one of the biggest struggles we had, especially about. 10 years ago when we were going through some pretty significant transitions, him becoming lead pastor, me starting Divine Threads, um, he would come home and he would be, I could tell, so stressed about his day and all the problems he'd heard of, all the whatever, the ministry stuff, normal ministry stuff. And I would have burdens of my own Mm -hmm. that I would feel like I couldn't talk to him about because that would just be adding more burden on him and not say anything, which totally ruined our communication and our depth of intimacy and all of that. So that's one struggle. Another struggle as a wife to uh, feel like I need to know everything that's going on in the church, every complaint, every uh, drama that's going on. That's been something I've noticed a lot of other pastors' wives getting involved in and um Maybe it's good for them. I know for me, I want to be able to walk into church on a Sunday morning and be able to love people and engage with them 
having no idea that they just had called my husband a horrible teacher or Mm -hmm. a bad leader. I don't want to know that. (laughs) And Bill has been really wise and protective of that and really not shared so much that I don't need to know because I'm not part of the problem and I'm not part of the solution. So Mm -hmm. a covering there between to the two of you and learning learning the balance and rhythm of what yeah. stay, helps you to stay healthy in yeah. uh, as you've done this work for decades now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, um, I internalize. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but she knows my tells. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. And you play so, poker enough. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. And so um, she will speak in when, when I'm, my sense of humor goes away. I'm totally quiet, Yeah, you know, around the house. I don't have energy for fun hobby things. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are things that she knows. And so then she'll start speaking into me. Mm -hmm. And I've I've learned to um, not justify not speaking by saying I'm protecting her. You know, so Mm -hmm. what I say, I I need to share what's going on in me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can do that and not violate confidences Mm -hmm. at work. and there's other stuff. There's just always drama things, relational drama things, you know, and and uh, those things she doesn't need to know about because I'm working through them. Mm-hmm. So I get to work through them with somebody, mm-hmm. and we're going to come out at a different place, you know. Right. But um, that's what I just see uh, a lot of pain in marriages, in ministry, where the wife is carrying that burden and mm-hmm. becomes a bitterness because she doesn't get to work through it with somebody. Right. So mm-hmm. true. You yeah. Know? And... and so try to protect her from that mm-hmm. um, stuff, but at the same time, uh, making sure she has a window into my soul. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and we've gotten better about that over, over the years. But we are not perfect by far. We are still working through that. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a <laughs> ongoing. ongoing. Just, just like anything that we've learned. It's still our issues. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when you know them, yeah, exactly. Knowing's half the battle. It is. Yeah. Well, before uh, we move to the next question, I just want to mirror back some really profound wisdom you both are putting out. But this, the boundaries and discerning those, both with those in your congregation or who are are in your wake, um, knowing what is yours to participate with and what is not. Mm -hmm. And then also within your marriage, not what is yours personally, Bill, that you're Mm going to bring home and let Kathy love you as your, her husband Mm -hmm. um, versus taking on the senior pastor hat and bringing that home and sharing that with her and then leaving her. I love how you said that she doesn't have the same place Mm -hmm. to process and to move through it and doesn't get to see all of the pieces playing out. So that's hard to discern, but I do think it is a key piece mm-hmm. to doing this well and probably needs a lot of prayer, yes, uh, mm-hmm. wisdom, counsel for maybe checking in with some other people. I'm curious. Yeah. How do you know? For me? Mm-hmm. How, how do I know what to share, what not to share, mm-hmm. or how... Um... Yeah, how do you know? I can hear someone listening going, that's awesome. Yeah. How do you know? How do yeah. you know? Well, I, I think I learned by seeing um, mistakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, I think just if you're in leadership and you can look around and watch people who've gone before you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think early on, I saw some very um, unhealthy, maybe not as healthy relationships as far as marriages, but then unhealthy um, wives trying to deal with how do I deal with this church that doing things to my husband. And um, and so I just saw this bitterness in some couples that we were close with mm. that uh, it's like, okay, um, somehow we got to be able to do something different. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I think um, like leadership team things, things where you're just always going to be disagreeing with each other in, in that, but that's a healthy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you just don't bring those home and say, okay, yeah, so-and-so really disagreed with me or this person, we're at loggerheads over this issue or um, – because that's – that should just be it's normal. Yeah. Everything's beneficial. Yeah. Not, right. Or everything's permissible, not everything's beneficial. Yeah. Right. And, that's an and then the and then the people who criticize I you know, I get criticized over everything. And it's in it could be shocking, but uh 
we just know, okay, we, we, we have people come to our church who don't know God, are just kind of, you know, investigating it to brand new baby mm-hmm. believers. And, and so I should expect it, things from all over the board. And we're a community church, and so that means everybody's coming in who has a church background with their brand of Christianity mm-hmm. and their expectations. And uh, and so I'm just going to get it all. But that's okay. That's part, um, you know, people talk about, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if we were a church of a bunch of mature people? And I'm just saying, <laughs> no, no, I don't want that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because that means a bunch of mature people are just a bunch of self-righteous people <laughs> who are only right. talking to themselves. Because if you're mature, you'd be bringing other people in because you're engaging with them on their journey. So great. Right. Right. So, um, so it's going to be messy. It's going to be a mess. Mm-hmm. Just and, like a family. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Learning to accept that and hold that. Yeah. And it, it provides a, a flexibility. To yeah. And I'm not going to be overly threatened by that and run to Kathy to make me feel better about it mm-hmm. by sharing her all this stuff. One thing about Bill that's really true that I so appreciate and want to emulate is that he doesn't take criticism super seriously nor does he take compliments super seriously Mm -hmm. he's he's super balanced that way so he doesn't get rocked a lot either way he doesn't become prideful and he doesn't become humiliated he Mm -hmm. just is steady Mm -hmm. well and and i don't feel that way inside (laughs) sure um i mean i appreciate that and i think god's grown me in Mm -hmm. that but i think you know i've got I, i was built with just this shame magnet in me mm-hmm. that um and so criticism i have no problem receiving criticism because yeah. you're I, the biggest you, critic for yourself yeah, yeah yeah and so it's like beat me up some more i deserve it and then uh the compliments is a hard thing to receive mm-hmm. um and uh, so that that's something god's had to really work on me to be able to receive things genuinely okay. um and not just think, well, if you really knew me, you wouldn't say that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it's, yeah. So I think I, I'm coming from that place and learning how to uh, to receive the good and the bad, and then trying to find things that are good even in the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that the things that rock me probably the most are the are the, is the criticism that I th- that I think, yeah, they they've got a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the criticism that. I know it's not really my heart and my, you know, that that can float off of me. But when I, it's like, oh yeah, they're right, and then I gotta, I need to own that and mm-hmm. and and work on that. But how does God? I mean, just that point is so important in terms of the how. You know, a lot of what we do here is to try to explain the hows. The how do we live and lead with integrity? And so when you talked about that vulnerability of resonance when someone's criticizing you and and you know that. Mm-hmm. There's truth to what they're saying, if not full truth. Yeah. You said that God's helped you in that journey, navigate that. And what what would you say? I think here's an example for emerging leaders that yeah. that don't have the mileage that you've had here in that kind of saddle, but are going to be facing criticism. Yeah. What do you say that? How, do, how has God helped you with that? What's what's your go to sort of when that comes, when that feeling hits? The go-to for you inside um, that you choose and have dis- learned that is the is the path towards um, a- a alignment with Him. Yeah, I, I think I've really embraced uh, <laughs> my humanity, mm-hmm. and um, that a title does not change that at all. Mm-hmm. And so, I truly, in my heart, see myself mostly like anybody else in our faith journey. And um, and so I am in, in just as need of Jesus as anybody else. I'm in desperate need of Jesus. I am so messed up. You know, Tim Keller talks about this, but I, I love it because it's just so much my journey. It's it's the more I know God, the, the, the more profoundly I am impacted by how messed up I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and at the same time, the more I am just overwhelmed by his love. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's those things at the same time. Yeah. And so, uh, so there's a humility, and yet a sense of great value and worth mm. at the at the same time. So when somebody's coming to me, um, I I know that I'm messed up. I know I have issues, and I know also know I'm blind to many of my issues. And so when they're speaking into me, um, 
the, the first thing I'll typically do is say, thank you. I want you to know I received that. And um, knowing that I haven't really fully processed what they're saying, mm -hmm. but if it's ringing something in there that's, I'll just let them know, thank you. I, I, I want you to know I receive it. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give that some more thought and prayer. And, uh, and then that's what I think I need to do. Mm -hmm. But, um, but to have that humility and also know, because, because I, what I just told you is what I'm telling our faith family all the time is, um, you know, I'm just on this journey. So I, I share mess ups and, um, and points of growth because I, I see myself like you and I want you to see me as you. I mean, God's called me into a, into a, a role as a leader and a shepherd that I take seriously, but I am, um, but I'm just on this journey with you. And so when you come to me with correction, that's not a shocker to me, and it shouldn't be a shocker to you. Mm -hmm. it, taking taking him at his word, you know, identity is. I've heard you say this several times, you know, uh, on on the stage, and and we're big believers in this that, that um, you're practicing the same thing that you're that. Uh, all of us are needing to practice, which is God, who do you say you are mm -hmm. and who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. And I choose to believe in what you say about yourself and about me. And as I'm dealing with this criticism that I'm finding resonance yeah. with, that yeah. the shame starts creeping up or what, whatever it may be, that's a rhythm. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I know you, I've watched you guys model that, you're, you're teaching that, but that's a rhythm for uh, an anecdote. Uh, to to w when those moments happen, isn't it? Right, mm -hmm. right. Did you want to say anything about emerging leaders and maybe something that you would want to pass on to them, the things that you're learning? Bill's been sharing, again, how to handle criticism. It just yeah. comes in the role. It just it does. does. So maybe yeah. that's wisdom, just to mm. say expect it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Expect it. Um, well, I um, one thing that I did think about is... Uh, a huge danger that I've seen a lot in 37 years of being in ministry with Bill is uh, when leaders become isolated. Mm, yeah. That isolation piece is so dangerous because they're not letting people speak into their lives. They're starting to believe that they own the truth, and it really leads to spiritual abuse. And it is done so much harm. Mm. So uh, one thing for emerging leaders is to have a group of people around you who are not afraid to speak truth into your life. Mm -hmm. And I know that's one thing Bill has done over the years, and he still, he practices that regularly. And it means so much to me, because the last thing I want is for you to become <laughs> mm, abusive. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, yes. In my own we world. want you to stay connected with that humility piece, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And me too. And me as well. So uh, we do, we need community around us who love Jesus, who will speak truth. And we do not isolate ourselves so that we become just clueless. Is there wisdom to keep in that circle small? When you mm. think about so yeah. so that there's mm -hmm. depth there, speak to yes. that. What do you? I hear resonance yeah. with that. Yes, because only so many people are going to know you at a real deep level, and so you know the thing I said about Kathy about she knows my tells. Um, there, there's a couple guys in my life who know the same thing, and actually they they go to Kathy mm -hmm. and say, "How's Bill doing?" Love that. And um, and so I meet with two guys once a month who um, just start looking into my soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have other, you know, people say, do you have best friends? And it's like, I, I have, I don't have a best friend, but I have a different people who fill up mm -hmm. different parts of my soul. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so th there's one guy who's, if I just want to be with somebody, I don't have to worry about anything. I, c I could say something really stupid and I don't care in front of him, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and we're just going to laugh and... I can just have no worries about being myself, and there's no expectation. Mm, that's huge. Yeah, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I have I have that guy, mm -hmm. and um, but then I have I also have the guys um, that will if I'm going to be with them, they're going to drill deeper, mm -hmm. and um, and so I don't want to be with them all the time. <laughs> you know, um, maybe that's why people don't want to be around me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Kathy, I can't believe it. We were prayed about this, Tara. And so, no. <laughs> oh. Oh. no, but you know what I mean? So, so I, I have people in my life, and they know. I mean, sure, we'll have fun, do different things, but they know I'm counting on them um, to wake me up mm-hmm. if uh, if I'm going along and I, I'm just ignoring some things that mm. are issues. This is so good. And so we've got more we want to unpack. We want to talk about your marriage. We want the juicy details. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We want more about your parenting and your grandparenting. So we're going to continue that in part two. But there are some profound things that were said here. And I'm going to encourage you as the listeners to listen to this again. There are just some nuggets that I think will not only um, shift the way you're leading, but also maybe shift the way you're seeing yourself Mm -hmm. and your own identity and the grace and love that God has for you, your own humanity. Uh, I'm just so grateful for uh, Bill and Kathy and what they're sharing. Yeah, thank you, Bill and Kathy. And if you want to learn more about Bill and Kathy Town, find more in our podcast bio. And also, Kathy's one of our keynote speakers at the Encourage Gathering, a two-day conference for women at Rolling Hills Community Church, our church, March 13th and 14th. And for more information about this one-of-a-kind resource for 2,500 women, visit EncourageGathering.com. That's I-N-CourageGathering.com. Thank you for joining us and being a leader committed to shrinking the integrity gap between the values we espouse and the values we actually live out in practice.